All right, I've proceeded to put one of the ear liners into an ear. This is the other ear that was shown first on camera as having been, uh, had the cartilage removed. And I've since put its ear liner in. There we go. And that's a nice, neat ear liner. Good thin edges. Good shape. Good grooming. Now we're going to go to the second one and show Some how that was done. Some of the tools done. that will be utilized in putting the ear liners in are here as shown. We have a stainless steel modeling tool from Jonas. A large, well, a six inch, three cornered needle. This is for puncturing air holes. And two uh, wooden modeling, uh, uh, clay sculpting tools, modeling tools, as well as the reliable uh, nylon bristle brush. These, are, these modeling tools are made out of acacia wood. They're very, very tough wood, very tough to break. I'm sure I could figure out a way to do it, but they're very tough to break. And as per the instructions for the use of this hide paste, if you mix it, mix it well, it will thin the paste. So I'm in there with an old butter knife that's been converted to taxidermy use, and I'm stirring up the paste. And this makes it much more spreadable. You can spread it with... Uh, a butter knife, you can spread it with your fingers, you can use a, a wood tongue depressor type craft tool. I'm going to use the butter knife and my fingers if needed. All right, here we go. We're cooking now, baby. Nice thing about the butter knife and using your fingers is getting under this portion of the ear that turns down. You really want to make sure you get your paste under there. You want to get it everywhere it needs to be. Now I'm putting it on thick, but this will be worked down to a more even, manageable layer. Putting it on thick at first, it will be worked down. You need to get the front and the back of the ear liner. And I'm going to continue until it's completely covered. And now we are sufficiently covered and thinned with a nice even layer. Next step is the installation into the deer's ear skin. We begin by, I begin by inserting my thumbs into the ear, making sure the interior part of the ear skin, the front ear skin is brought out just a bit. Try to set this up with as little wrinkles, as few wrinkles as possible. Make sure it's even. I then pull the ear liner out of the paste, give a little wipe off, and that is just a little bit too much there on the tip. There we go. Clean my finger off on my apron. And we insert the ear liner Thusly. Come on, get happy. And there we go. Now we taxi the derma, manipulate the skin, Move the ear skin where we want it, where it's supposed to be. Come down and around. Fit it, fit it well. Make sure we get the pattern. There's the rear pattern of the hair, where it meets up with the front pattern of the hair. We have that little, what I call the seam of the hair. We're going to go along. I'm going to make sure this is pushed all the way down tight into tight contact with the ear liner. Make sure the edges are lined up properly. Now 
Now you watch now the the ear paste is going to the paste is going to just pop out of there. And this is where my Jonas modeling tool comes in handy. It's a stainless steel modeling tool. I get in there, I could pull that excess paste out, put it back in the container. This is good stuff. I don't want to waste it. It's a good paste with a good color to it. I'd really rather not waste it. That's why I say you can you can put too much paste in the ear, but when you do, you can take it out. Now this is a lot easier to do with this paste than with the uh, with the epoxy paste. This is an acrylic, so it's water based, so it's much 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 more forgiving. If it gets on the hair, it can be washed off the hair very easily with plain water. Plain water will take it off the hair. Now it's on the hair there, so I'm going to get it off. Get a little, uh, little piece of paper towel. Tear it. I'm going to wet it down with a, uh, a, a Kimmel foreign water solution. A little spritz. Get in there and get it on the hair and clean the hair off and it comes right off. Okay, now that's how that little disaster is handled. Now I take this wide, looks like a finger on this end, this wide based modeling tool, this clay sculpting tool, and I'm going to start pressing down the front ear skin into tight contact and you see how the color is coming through here makes a tight contact with I just lost my darn light but it makes good contact with the ear liner I'll continue on again when the paste comes out of the bottom I can go in there even with the, even with the uh, acacia wood modeling tool and pull the stuff out. Whoops, a daisy. All right. We have the paper towel set with the little mild soap solution on it. I'll clean that right off. Now what I want to do is get under here, under the overhang, and push the paste down to the base, get it off my thumb, Clean my thumb on my apron. Get this here. I don't want to constant now I'm now I'm concentrating on, on putting everything in its proper place. I want to make sure the hide is properly lined up to the ear liner. I want to make sure the edges are on the edge and that they're not rolled toward the back or toward the rear or the front. I want them to be even along the edge. Use both fingers and kind of sandwich it in between. Work down with my finger. Any air bubbles that should arise, you take a three-cornered needle, poke, poke it right into the skin. That little three-cornered hole will seal right back up as it dries. Comes some more paste coming out. And you can see along the edge of the container here how much paste has been taken out of it already. That will go back into the main, the main body of the container, the paste in the container. I don't want to waste any of that. It has good color and it's good paste. So now I continue to work this into position. Now I take my index finger, go under the turn of the turn down on the ear liner and start to brush the hair down into place. Go along with my finger and raise the hair up. Make sure this is even. I want to compare it with my other ear. I want to be sure the ears match at the Markings are lined up, and I can see here that we need to come up. Remember, this had the big repair. 
to this section of the ear over here. This had a big repair. But it doesn't seem to be interfering with its placement. The markings on both ears seem to be right. They're matching up. Now it's a matter over however long it takes, over whatever time it takes, to continually, continually taxi the skin onto the ear liner, grooming it as you go, removing excess paste as you go. Hey, now there's more. And what I like about this modeling tool, it fits right into the channels of the ear and allows you to really press it down and that does two things. It makes sure the contact between the ear skin and the ear liner is complete and it also makes the color appear stronger as it goes. And these, these hairs in this part of the ear are really, on this particular ear, on this side I should say, on this ear, really want to be covered up with stuff so <laughs> I need to go in there with more of my soap solution Chemol 4 soap solution and wipe them down even if the stuff dries on the hair this paste if it dries on the hair it will brush out it will brush out uh, also this paste can be used um, as sort of a um, a hair setting type gel or mousse which is great when you're working on a mousse. Now here is where the repair was made. So this needs some extra care and attention to assure it's lining up just so. Well, that's it. That's it. Your liner's in place. Now we go to the back side. We go along. And you see a lot of air bubbles under here. Now the nice trick with this hide paste, as it dries, as it dries, it will draw the skin down onto the form. That includes the ear liners. Now this is a large air bubble right here. So I'm going to go in with a three-cornered needle. I'm going to pop that, push the air out. And you see that's nice, flat contact with the ear liner. Another air bubble right here, same thing. Go in, push the air out. Any paste that gets on the hair, simply wipe it away. Now, I'm not too concerned about making the vein details show through at this point. That will occur over the course of a couple of days. I'm going to continue to work the skin on the ears before I put them aside to dry. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how I set the ears up to dry. One last thing to do before setting them up to dry is to remove the hide paste from the skin along the bottom of the ear and off the base of the ear liner. It will never really dry right against the ear liner. And I don't want it to dry against the ear liner because this is the area where the clay ear butt will be affixed. Okay, like so. After we get that cleaned off, we'll come over, wipe down the hide, wipe away the hide paste off the hide on the inside base of the ear and off the base of the ear liner. And I don't want it there because as I said the clay for the ear base, the ear butts, will need to get there. And I'd rather not have a lot of wet clay, uh, wet hide paste interfering with the setting of the, uh, the clay. Now this is what I do to let the ears dry some. I will leave them alone for a day. I'll come back and I will rework. If, if you, can, you can stay and rework these things for hours at a time and end up messing up 
the hair patterns or the way the skin is laying and drying. The skin needs to dry a bit, okay? Once the skin starts to dry, you can press it into even tighter contact with the ear liners. The cape is wrapped up real well in the plastic. It has a wet towel over it. Uh, it's in the basement shop here, which is about 62 degrees, 65 degrees. So it's a, it's a cool temperature. The ears will stay like this for two to three days until the upper portion of the ears dry, especially under the turn here. That will have a tendency to drum if you're not careful. I have done the ears. I have put the ear liners in while it's been on the form with this new paste and I had a lot of trouble controlling the drying of the ears. So this is this is my old method of doing it with the epoxy paste. I would let the ears set for a couple of hours until they were dry. Then I could put the uh, the edge clips on them and the tip clips on them and proceed to mount the ear. This will stay for a couple of days like this while I finish prepping the form. Um, that would include hollowing out, uh, carving out the nostrils, cutting lip slots, lacrimal gland slots, uh, prepping the antlers and the like. Um, and while that's being done, the ears will have a chance to set. Before it gets mounted, I still have the face to prep. Thinning the nostrils, nose pad, taking the, uh, the eyelids all the way down to the edge, the whole nine yards. Then it'll be ready to mount. Um, if it gets delayed by any, ch uh, uh, by, by, because of any, any unseen mishaps, uh, it will go in the refrigerator. I have a shop refrigerator in my big building and it'll get, it'll get put in there for a couple of days. But you see how the air bubbles keep forming and you can keep pressing them down, they're going to keep coming back. The problem is the skin is very wet, the hide is very wet. When they begin to tighten up and toughen up, removing the air bubbles will be much, much easier. So until that time, this is my method. This is how I do it. We'll see you on. All right, it's been eight hours since I set these liners in place. And I've gone over and I've poked some more holes in the air pockets that formed under the skin. Now I'm going to clamp the edges of the ears and the tips. I use this counted cross stitch canvas. Okay. And these are cut to shape and I've been using these for years. They, they're cut to shape. They fit over the tips like so and I use the spring type, spring clamp type clothes pins and I hold these in place against the edges of the tip of the ear and in the lower edges of the ears. Now these are made for average sized deer ears. I tuck it in under the tip and we go down to the bottom. So they're a little a little big for this for this little deer. But they will fit and they will work. Put the first clamp on, first close pin clamp. We put another one in place. Now we get up to the tip. We hold down the canvas, plastic canvas at the tip, and secure that to the piece that's running along the side. And we keep adding clothespins along the edge. This will create a very fine, very thin ear edge. And that's it. That's what it looks like. Kind of like a white-tailed deer radar dish of some weird kind. And the last thing I do is I gently holding, I don't want to upset the lay of the hair, I will 
bring the hair over the top edge into place, the ear hairs, like so. Get them as neat as possible. Now this has a little paste in it. I will brush that out more briskly when the ear is fully dried. And there are both ears done up again with their little supports held in place. As seen on TV, sort of. As seen on video. There we go. That'll hold them up. And we'll hold this one up real well. And there we are. It's a hold up! It's a hold up! These will stay at least until overnight with the clamps in place. I'll then take them off tomorrow afternoon, probably late in the day. And I'll make some final adjustments to the skin. Press the skin on the back down in contact with the veining. Try and get that to show through. In the meantime, we're out of here.